A Titan Combine has some 15,000 parts. On the go in harvest, it's an impressive display of power. Of course, most of this energy goes toward bringing in the crop, but a small amount is used to monitor the performance of the combine. Sensors employ minute amounts of energy, performing like mini alternators, converting this power into electric energy, which is sent as rapid bursts through the wiring network to the digital tachometer, where it is changed into readable numbers so the operator can monitor performance. The digital tack is very readable and very precise. In this program, you'll learn how it works and how to diagnose any problems. The digital tack must be precise for it monitors four vital operations. The ground speed in miles or kilometers per hour the speed of the lower shaft of the feeder house in revolutions per minute the engine speed also in rpms and the cleaning fan speed in rpms when you first start the combine the tack automatically displays engine rpm the green dot indicates which function is being displayed in this case, the engine RPM. If engine speed falls below 2175 RPM or exceeds 2400, this red light will blink on and off, indicating a problem. The tack is so accurate that it measures each of the three RPM functions to within plus or minus 10 RPM. It also rounds off the reading to the nearest 10 RPMs. This means that an engine speed of about 2340 could be displayed as that, or as 2330, or 2350 RPM. Variations that small mean no significant difference in performance. The ground speed indication, for its part, is also very accurate, to within plus or minus a tenth of a mile per hour, or one half kilometer per hour. To call up a particular reading, you simply touch the display with your finger. The arrow indicates a light sensing spot which automatically dims the display light at night. This is a viewing comfort feature. You should also be aware that the display light itself can get quite hot, up to 300 degrees in some conditions. Sometimes the tack may give an erratic display. This could be caused by a sudden change in power supply or even interruption in the ground circuit. You get the same at times with an electronic calculator, and the cure is about the same. With a calculator, you touch the clear key. On the combine, you simply turn the key switch off, pause, and then turn it back on again. This clears the field, and the engine RPM display should come up. Right now, let's see how the digital tack works beginning with the sensor. As said, they're like many alternators, complete with a coil and permanent magnet. The revolving tone wheel interrupts the flow of electric energy, causing pulses of current. There are four such sensors, one for each function. You'll find the engine RPM sensor on the front of the timing gear cover. It gets its readings off the camshaft gear, which acts as the tone wheel. The ground speed sensor is located on top of the transmission case. This sensor also does not have its own tone wheel. The teeth of the differential ring gear perform that function. The lower feeder house drive sensor is underneath the feeder house on the right hand side. It has its own tone wheel. As does the cleaning fan sensor, located on the right hand end of the fan shaft. All are easily found. And except for the engine RPM sensor, all are quickly accessible. This makes matters simpler when something goes wrong. The pulses of voltage travel from the sensors to the digital tack. Here, a microprocessor is actually counting the number of times the pulses reverse themselves each second. This rapid counting is rounded off 
and converted into a legible LED display, which the operator reads. But suppose something goes wrong. What do you do then? Well, you repair it as you would any other electrical circuit within the combine. You employ the seven steps of diagnosis. Here they are. You may recall them from another program. If not, they're in your tech manual. Let's review them briefly. First, know the system. Then, talk to the operator to find out the symptoms of what's wrong. Next, operate the machine yourself to help identify the problem. Fourth, inspect the machine. Specifically, the malfunctioning circuit. It's surprising how often a seemingly big problem is caused by nothing more complicated than a loose connector. Besides, this visual inspection is a lot quicker than testing the system. If that doesn't prove out, though, you will have to go into the system, listing the possible causes as you go, eliminating one potential trouble spot after another, finally reaching a conclusion and testing the conclusion. Here are the tools you'll need to test the conclusion. Miscellaneous hand wrenches, screwdrivers, a volt ohm meter, a service guard tack tester, and a tech manual, which gives complete wiring diagrams. Depending on your conclusions, here is a list of possible tests you can employ. First, the power and ground circuit for the tack itself. This is the most logical and easiest place to begin, especially if the entire tack is out. Second, the tack itself. It's right there. It's easy to test, and in the vast majority of cases, it won't be at fault, so you might as well clear it early on. Then you might test the individual sensor circuits at the tack, both for their continuity and to determine if they're sending power. Also, they are there, handy and easy to test. If the circuits don't test out of the tack, then you should go to the sensor. And if that checks out, then your problem is likely in the wiring. To get at the rear of the digital tack, you have to remove the instrument panel. Do that by first disconnecting the fuel shutoff cable knob. Then remove the panel screws. Tilt the panel away and unplug the sure seal connector on the rear of the tack. The digital tack gets both its power and its ground from the key switch, circuits number 9D and 10H, as they come off the tack. You can also see that they enter the tack at pin numbers 5 and 6. Simply lay your volt ohm meter between these two pins on the harness connector. The reading should give the battery voltage with the key on. The next test is the tack. You should know that the tack itself is the most reliable part of the entire system. If something goes wrong with the system, it most likely won't be here. The tacks are supplied to deer from an outside vendor. They are sealed by four screws. Do not, under any circumstances, unscrew these to get into the tack itself. That would void the warranty. By the same token, though, the tack is very easy to test, to find out if there's anything wrong without going inside. Simply plug your service guard tack tester into the rear of the unit. Hook the black clip to a ground and the red clip to the key switch. Now the tack is ready to give test readings for all four functions. For engine speed, the tester will give a test reading of between 1190 and 1210 RPM. A test reading of from 650 to 670 RPM should be indicated for cleaning fan speed. The test reading of the lower feeder house shaft speed should be from 850 to 870 RPM. Note that this speed and the others are circuit test speeds for the convenience of the test unit. Here, for instance, Header backshaft speed would not exceed 790 RPM on the model 8820 Titan Combine. 760 RPM on the other models. Much lower actual operating speeds than the readings for the service guard tack tester. The test reading for ground speed depends on the size tire mounted on the combine. A hole in the rear of the unit allows you to set switches to tire size. 
A chart, which you will find both in your technical manual and on the tester, gives the correct test number readout for whichever tire size. You'll note that there are four switches. Two through four are for the tire size setting. The first you set to give the ground speed rating in either miles per hour or kilometers per hour. If the tack itself tests out, then the problem must be elsewhere in the system. The next step then is to test the individual circuits for all four functions. First, with the engine off and key off, make a continuity test using the ohm meter. Set one end of the probe on pin number six of the harness connector for the tack. Pin number six is for circuit number 10, the ground. The other probe goes to pin number one for circuit number 125. If you look at section 240, group 5 in your technical manual, you will see that circuit number 125 is the circuit for the engine speed monitor. You can trace all the circuits in the technical manual in the same manner. Here they all are. One circuit for each of the four functions, plus power and ground. We will stop the program at this point so you can make a note of these. Press the restart button when you're ready to continue. If the circuit in question is all right, it will show a reading of 1,000 or 300 ohms. The readings may differ because the sensors come from two different suppliers. And depending on the suppliers, the resistance may be either of these two figures. You can test each circuit in turn going around the ring of the connector. Here you see we're at pin number two, circuit 123, the cleaning fan. You also see that there is no reading. If you fail to get a resistance rating, then you can conclude that there is a continuity break for that circuit. If all circuits did check out, it's also a simple matter to test for voltage for each individual circuit at this point. Note that you should refer to the tech manual for all circuit checks. A word of caution, before starting the voltage check, be sure to reinstall the red shutoff knob you removed earlier. Then start the combine engine, set it at fast idle, and engage the separator. The test procedure is the same. One probe on the ground pin, the other on the circuit pin. The reading should be one volt AC. If there is no reading, then you don't have power continuity. You may need to adjust the sensor, which we will discuss later. The point is, you might as well test for both ground continuity and power at this point, because you're there and you have things pulled apart anyway. So, why not? You can also test for continuity at the sensor itself. It's done in the same manner, one probe on each pin. Should you get continuity here, then you know that the sensor itself is all right. That would indicate a problem in the wiring harness. The first step in examining a harness is to once more test for proper ground continuity, beginning at the sensor connector. You do this by laying one probe on the pin, the other on the combine frame. Test for ground first because at this point, you may not know whether the problem is in the ground or power circuit. If the ground checks out, then you should check the circuit through the harnesses at each connector point. The wiring diagrams in the technical manual show the complete circuits and connector points. All you have to do is match the pin or socket in the connector to the proper circuit position in the wiring diagram. Simply check the circuit at each connector point. When you encounter no reading, then you will have isolated the faulty harness. Now your diagnosis will be complete. You can then repair the connector if the problem is a broken pin or socket. Or you can repair a broken wire in a harness. Or you may have to replace the entire harness if the wire cannot be replaced. In addition to diagnosing and correcting any problems, you may find it necessary to adjust the sensors. Specifically, you should check the gap between the tone wheel and the magnetic pickup at the sensor. The width of this gap affects the voltage. The closer the gap, 
the higher the voltage. For a normal gap setting, refer to the operator's manual. You can adjust this gap in or out to get that desired one volt AC reading on three of the sensors. The exception is the engine speed sensor. Its gap is fixed and it cannot be adjusted. It is difficult to get at the pins without removing the sensor. So check for continuity first at the connector, which is near the water pump. Second, the ground wire for the engine speed sensor is inside the engine compartment wiring harness. You'll find the other end of the ground wire fastened to the lower right corner of the relay panel. So you can check for a good ground here. Altogether, diagnostics of the digital tack is a fairly simple process. Just follow the seven step procedures used in any diagnosis and test the separate elements of the system. The ignition circuit, including its ground, then the tack itself, next the sensor circuits for continuity and voltage, then the sensor, including its ground lead, and finally harnesses. It's a process of elimination, and it works to keep the digital tack operating efficiently.